With the chosen project, we wanted to show that it is possible to transform an existing building from the 80s with a relatively low quality of living, non-functional, no good materiality, no good connection with the outside, from a house into a home, from space to place, which means from generic to very site-specific living, to connect culture and nature, uh, to open the house towards outside, which means to invite the nature to come in, where an essential theme was how to transform the closeness of the structure into an open structure, to invite the light and to invite the environment, which means mostly nature, for which a beautiful garden was created, into the house, which means the nature is entering the house, but also the house is pushing its osmotic skin into the garden, so we actually sit in the garden. And the views are framed, so we have a compositional themes, proportional themes, that actually really enhance the quality of living and that embrace the inhabitants into a, a pulsating, resonating skin or shell that really tries to lift the, the joy of living and the communication within the family and within the interior, but also the communication between inside and outside. That reflects also on the level of a human being that really tries to catch the dialogue between within and without. We are a being that is not only material, but kind of a holistic, really being that, that tries to find balance in this uh, very kind of alienated world. One of the essential driving forces of what one does, or what I'm doing, or what we are doing as well, is first of all to, to make a kind of an anamnesis of the society to see how a modern human subject is actually alienated from the society, from nature, between each other, and finally from himself, from his very internal uh, kind of uh, essential being. So, w what we are doing is actually to try to heal the landscapes let's say, from the planetary level down to the, this country that has many, many urbanistic and cultural landscape problems in terms of dispersed buildings, etc., to the city or village level where the cities are kind of not centered. They are not helping the community to really assemble themselves. Coming down to the house where we are actually looking for, for the heart of the house, to look for the primordial principles, which is the fire. We develop this house around the kitchen, and then living, and it, it actually unfolds and embraces all, all the life. So healing through the means of architecture. Architecture has to become uh, the help to transform and to make this world a better place, to transform the things on, on the level, the visual level. The beauty has to help. The, Harmony and resonance, they have to help, but it's also materi material aspects. Natural materials, actually, the ones who are really much more in tune with our inner vibrations, have to be included much more in our at least residential dwelling culture, if not that much in the business and the other aspects. So we are trying to do it in a very holistic way and to really serve the, the community, the people, but also uh, I mean, this uh, bigger picture of the environment, the global warming, etc. All these themes have to be included in your way of approaching a problem and then to solve it in that way that you respond as, as holistically as possible to a certain problem. So creation is actually, if it's inclusive and it, if it embraces the other people as well, can heal and can help in architectural terms now, more or less. Vision of a new world, I think, can't be developed without being connected or rooted in the old world. We have to understand the principles in the old world, of the old world, of the old, let's say now professionally, architectural and urban planning or urban design principles that in history effectively seen comparatively were better balance that they are today. We have the situation of very alienated cities, suburbanization, etc., dispersed urbanity, um, 
I mean, bad quality of materials, etc. So, new world has to be established actually in the new spirit and in a new time, but with understanding the old principles, which have to be adapted and transformed to be applied to modern living. So, new world is not escape to future or to some futuristic, progressistic ideals, but it is something that binds the primordial principles of living, of knowing the psychology of individual, but also bigger, uh, let's say, community. And architecture is the shell, and you've been planning that either enhances and helps to open the communication or it closes it more. So what we are uh, hoping is that the new world is not going in this dispersion and uh, generic globalized uh, mantras, but that actually keeps connection with autonomous cultures. The diversity of the beauty of the world landscapes, cultures, will help this world to, be su uh, to survive and thinking also about envi environmental questions, etc. So uh, it is a responsible statement and responsible uh, paradigm and responsible perspective of what we are doing with our world, also as architects, urban planners and designers. So it's not a voluntary uh, random play with I mean, it has to be playful, the creation, but not a play that has no uh, long-term responsibility in itself.